Hello and welcome, AP students. Uh, I trust you're well. A uh, happy Friday to you. It is Friday. We have finished another week of virtual school. Uh, today we will actually begin unit six and begin talking about thermodynamics. So hopefully you have a little bit of remembrance on this section where we'll be dealing with a lot of delta H, change in enthalpy. And we're gonna look at primarily four ways that we're gonna calculate it. Calorimetry, the calorimetry labs we did where we used the styrofoam cups, hopefully uh, you remembered that. We have the average bond enthalpy, enthalpy of formation, and then Hess's law. Uh, and a lot of you found Hess's law to be pretty straightforward and somewhat easy, and uh, hopefully uh, that will all come back because I will do uh, two virtual lessons for this section. So I have this one that we're going to do today, and the one that I'm going to put out for Monday uh, will have uh, a number of more working problems than what this particular uh, virtual lesson will have. So that way we have one, at least one example of each. I will do a calorimetry in this particular. Uh, lesson here. So next week we will have a test on units four, five, and six as we're quickly wrapping up uh, this uh, particular uh, unit and the seven units that will be on your AP uh, exam. So anyways, let's jump into the lesson. So we looked at uh, a number of graphs already. Uh, graphs are really important. Uh, that is why uh, we are spending uh, quite a little bit of time in these. Uh, and here is just the basic look of endothermic versus uh, exothermic. Endothermic, the products have more potential energy. They have absorbed energy from the from the surroundings, the system absorbed energy from the surroundings. Hopefully those terms uh, mean something now. So your reaction is the system and everything else around it is the surroundings and, and it's absorbing, that's why it, the energy is higher. And when you look at the uh, exothermic, now you have your products down here, which means they have less potential energy. The reaction released energy from the system into the surroundings. So those are important uh, terms to remember. So here, once again, you have the system and the surroundings. So when energy flows uh, from the surroundings into, you are endothermic and you have a positive delta H. It means you absorb. So uh, the enthalpy is positive. Exothermic you have right here, it's negative, so the system released energy into the surroundings. So you have a negative delta H. So remember heat flow. Heat always flows from hot to cold. So when you talk about this reaction here is our system, and same thing over here, this is our system. And then outside is our surrounding. So the system is re releasing energy out, that's exo exothermic when it's pulling the energy in, cool to the touch, all that good stuff, that means it is an endothermic process. We know how the graph would look, just uh, a rough graph for this is gonna be like this, and a rough graph for this one will be like that. So those are the two general forms that you would see. So here is some examples. So we have change in energy. Q is heat transfer. And then we have our W here, which is work. And over here we have a formula that is very useful. We've done uh, some problems like this before. So we could do our work as our pressure and our change in volume. And then we can do a conversion which we had learned about, which is 101.3, and this is joules per atmospheres times liters, and that is a conversion unit that we had learned about previously. So this formula here is very useful. That tells us the change in energy, the change in the enthalpy. So when we look at an example problem on this, it says here, calculate the change in E. And it says 300 joules was absorbed. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to write that down. So I have change in enthalpy equals 
my change in energy, I have my Q, which it tells me it right here. So I have 300.0 joules, put that in parentheses. And then I have here plus and my work. Well, I have my numbers here, but I don't have my work. So I've got to figure this out. So I have my work equals my negative, and I have here five atmospheres, so 5.0 atm. And I have my change in my volumes are given to me. And this is multiplied by uh, 3.0 liters minus 2.0 liters. So final minus, final minus initial. So that becomes a 1.0 liters once I uh, uh, minus those off. So this here is negative uh, 5.0 atmospheres times liters. And this is my conversion. So I could just set this over one right here and go right to my conversion to calculate my work. So I have 101.3 and this is joules and on the bottom is atmospheres times liters. That crosses off right there. So now I could just plug this into my calculator. So I got negative 5.0 times 101.3. So I get here uh, negative 506.5, and this is joules. So now I can come down to the bottom here. I can circle this, and I can come down here and plug it in for my work. So here I have plus a negative 506.5, and that's joules. And now I, can, now I can solve this. So I get my change in energy. So I have 300.0 minus uh, 506.5, and that is, my significant figures is to the 10th spot, so I can write this down as negative 206.5 joules, and that is my change in uh, energies. Hopefully this uh, brings a little bit of uh, memory back on solving some problems using uh, equals Q plus W. So once again, here is my diagram. Uh, we've looked at this quite a bit. Here is with an enzyme, without an enzyme, look at the vast difference in the activation energies. And that's why enzymes are so critical. So one of the things that you have here is the overall energy that's released. And that line right here is important. This is how much was actually released. If we had the graph that looked like so, this from here to here is how much was absorbed from the surroundings. So those are some potential questions you could see. <clears throat> so what is heat transfer? Energy is transmitted due to temperature differences. And uh, thermodynamics tells us how much heat is transferred and that's Q and how much work is done and that's RW and the final state of our system. And that's how we do our calculations to determine. So here is one that is really useful. It is Q equals MCAT. Uh, we've used this quite a bit. Q is the heat transfer. M is mass. It says kilograms here, but normally it's going to be in uh, normally it's going to be in grams because specific heat. Our specific heat from our tables and charts gives it to us in grams uh, times Celsius. So uh, that's what we're going to basically use. So if if we pulled up a chart and we looked at a chart, we would find that, for example, our specific heat of uh, water, so here we have H2O, and let's see the specific heat of it. We could say it is 4.184, and that's joules and grams times degrees Celsius. So, that, and that's one that we use a lot. And then finally, we have our change in temperature. So Q, and that's on your formula sheet, by the way. You don't have to have that memorized. You just have to know how to use it. Now, the Q equals MCAT is very useful in the effect that we can set up the system and the surroundings. So you could come something like this. And this is one that we would do quite a bit. You just have to put a negative on the one side because 
obviously what one loses, the other is going to gain. So we're going to set up as negative MC delta T equals MC delta T. And that's a very useful formula that we use in, in, ca in calculating our catalymetry. So uh, uh, hopefully you have gotten that. So let's, before we work an example problem with that, let's look at a couple other little things here. So heat, the form of energy that can be transferred from one system to another, thermodynamics is concerned with the amount of heat that's transferred. And heat transfers deals with the determination of the rates of the transfer. So when you transfer heat, it can be done in three different ways. You have conduction. Conduction is direct touch. Convection is moving from hot to cold by molecules. And then radiation is no contact. It is radiating heat from a source, like a stove. You can put your hand over the top of it and you can feel the heat radiating up. So it's no molecules, it's actually uh, electromagnetic or mechanical movement. So those are your three different ways that you can have a heat transfer by. So specific heat's real important, it's C on our MCAT, uh, and it is listed for us. Sometimes you might have to calculate it, but it is generally given to you, and a lot of times it's for water. And it is joules per grams uh, times Celsius. I know here it says this is one way that you could see it, but the most common way that you will find it on a chart is joules, grams times degrees Celsius, and that's uh, the ones that we'll be using. So calorimetry, that is what we spent some time on, and it's a neat process in that you can isolate and determine the change in enthalpy. So if you remember the four ways that you can calculate delta H, calorimetry was the first one, and we're going to do an example problem with that here in a second and that is using your Q equals MCAT and setting up the system and the surrounding all at the same time. And here is an example problem. So let's look at this. So we have 50 grams of H2O at 25 degrees Celsius mixed with 100 grams of uh, water at 90 degrees Celsius. And it gives us our specific heat there and it wants to know the final temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up Q hot equals Q cold. And we're gonna place this as our negative uh, because heat always is gonna transfer away. It's gonna go from hot to cold. So we'll just place that as negative. We're gonna put the hot water on this side. So I'm gonna rewrite over here. I'm gonna go negative and I'm gonna go MC delta T. And I'm going to have that equal to MC delta T. All right, so now I'm going to plug in my information. So I have here negative, and I have 100 grams, 100.0 grams. My specific heat is 4.184, and this is joules times Celsius. And then my temperature. Well, I know my initial, I don't know my final. That's okay. I can go temperature final uh, minus, and my initial is right here at 90. So I go 90 degrees Celsius. So right away, I can just cancel off grams, grams, Celsius, Celsius. So now I'm choose E. And that's important to uh, get rid of your units. So now I can set this up onto the other side and I have my information right there. So I have my mass is 50.0 grams. My uh, specific heat is 4.184 joules and this is grams times Celsius. And then I have, once again, I don't know the final temperature. That's what I'm about to calculate. Temperature final minus, but I have my initial, which was 25 degrees Celsius. And once again, same thing, leave that to cancel. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of, I'm going to cancel them off both sides because I, I don't, 
uh, need that. And the jewels also canceled off because they're on both sides. So that's gone. And I'm solving for college anyway, so I'll have my degrees Celsius there. So now let's foil these out. So first off right here, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna have uh, negative 100.0, and that's temperature final. A minus and a minus is a plus, so I have plus uh, 90 times 100 is 9,000, and that's gonna be 0 0.0. And I'm gonna come on this side here, so here I have foil that out, so I have 50.0 temperature final. And I have minus, let me plug that in real quick here. I got 50 times 25. So I have 1,250. So I have minus uh, 1,250. So what I want to do is I want to work with positive numbers. So I am going to uh, eliminate some things here. So I'm going to add 100. 0 0.0 temperature final on both sides, 100.0 temperature final to get rid of that. And then I'm going to, on this side here, add 1,250 plus uh, 1,250. So now when I look at this, I'm going to have on this side here, 150 temperature final equals. So I got, uh, just do quick math on this here. I have 10,250. My math serves me right there, I believe so. So now I can just uh, calculate my temperature final. So I have 10,250 divided by 150 and I have three sig figs. So my temperature final is going to equal 68.3 degrees Celsius. So I use calorimetry to do this. And this is really important because this could be something very definitely that you could see on the AP exam. So I set both sides up. One side has to be negative because what one gains, the other one is going to lose because it has to come from somewhere and you're only dealing with the system and the surroundings. So I have two different masses of water, two different temperature. I mix them and in the end, I have a 68.3 degrees Celsius and change. And that is called a bomb calorimeter. Uh, and that is my system is what I placed in there. And then I have my surroundings here. So once again, that is a real important skill. Uh, hopefully uh, you got that and it makes some sense to you on that. So that is all I'm going to do for today on this particular lesson. So we solved two different problems. One is really, really important more than the, than the first one was this uh, calorimetry problem where you were dealing with uh, Q equals MCAT and setting Q up negative q equals q and then plug it in information and sometimes you do at the full sometimes if you're given uh you might have to be solving for the mass so there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can see this uh, pan out but i'll have another virtual lesson for us on monday and uh, we will continue working problems we will work another calorimetry problem and we'll work at least uh average bond enthalpy uh, enthalpy of formation and hess's law I have to do another, throw another video in there on Tuesday. I will do that. So. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, go in peace.